So we have got the Dinosaurs Return, which we are, I'm going to tell you about. So, um, so Dinosaurs Return, we're going to read today. Um, before I do, I think I'd like some help. Would anybody like to come up onto the stage, you don't have to be on here for very long, and play the part of Sir Charlie Stinky Socks? It's a, we haven't, we've never done this before, but it could, it could be quite fun. Would you like to come up? Okay, up on the stairs. What's your name? Toby. Toby. Big round of applause for Toby. <laughs> Excellent, Toby. Right. All you have to do, first of all, is be knighted and put on Sir Charlie's tunic. You may never get out of it again, but there we are. Excellent. Hands up in the air while we give you a belt. Hands down. Excellent. Does he look lovely? <laughs> and then you've got a map. So you need to bring this map up when I call you up, okay? But you need to leave the map on the stage afterwards. But don't worry, we can do all this, we can work this all out. So, here we have Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. Would you like to go and sit back down again? Marvellous. Now, here we are, just check the time. So, I need your help for the rest of this story. You can hear the music, which is my husband, Nigel. Everyone wave to Nigel, say hello, Nigel. Hello, Nigel. Nigel's very clever, and he's done music and songs and sound effects, all sorts of things to make this into a real show. And if anything gets scary, don't worry. Sir Charlie is very kind. He never fights. He always resolves things, makes things lovely at the end. So it's all, it's all lovely, but we're not scared. So, Sir Charlie has stinky socks, as Janet told you. And we've all got stinky socks here, haven't we? The stinky socks, stinky socks can be very useful, especially if they're Sir Charlie's stinky socks. So I, what I want you to do is, whenever I mention the socks, there are a couple of points when I need you to use your stinky socks. Don't really take them off, but I, what I, I want you to imagine you're taking them off now. So let's pretend to take our socks off, okay? Some grown-ups helping as well. I want to see all of you, please. I'm watching. Any grown-ups, take your socks off. I want you to hold them together and I want you to swing them round in the air. Excellent. Oh, what a good audience you are. Swing those stinky socks around in the air. Okay, so we can remember to do that, yes? The other thing I need you to do, little clue about what this book is about. What's it about? What's it about? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, excellent. Dinosaurs are very big. They make a lot of noise when they walk. And we, have, we couldn't get the right dinosaur rumbling sound for dinosaurs moving and rumbling the ground. So we want you to be the rumbling dinosaurs. So I'm going to split you down in the middle, just like a pantomime. And this half, I'd like you to do rumble, rumble. Can you try that? Rumble, rumble. Excellent. This half, I'd like you to boom, bash. Excellent, but we need it twice as loud. So have a little practice. You get four beats to count you in. Here we go. Two, three, four. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. I was going to say, there's always one that one does one too many, and there's always me who forgets to do the last one. So there we are. We've got that. Um, is there anything else we need? Oh, um, so Charlie has a theme tune. Is that the last thing? Yeah, so Charlie has a theme tune. Before he goes on any of his adventures, he has a theme tune. So I'd like to see you all raising your swords in the air. I'll get mine, in fact, here. And we're just sort of getting in the mood for an adventure by having a bit of a march. You can march on your bottoms, it's all right. So sort of this sort of marching. And we'll go on a bit of a, an adventurous march with Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. Here we go. You are very bold. You are very brave. You are very clever. And you're not afraid of anything, are you? And you've got your cat by your side. There he is. Keep marching. Keep waving those swords. We are in for a really huge adventure. Keep going. Get ready to put your swords down. Swords down. Excellent. Now, before we start this, this is a very important thing here. This is called author having a drink of water. Would you like to see that? Not very exciting, but very important. So have I forgotten anything? Before I start this show, have I? Oh, yes, my egg, thank you very much. Well remembered, sir, thank you. Very important. We need the egg. We need to put egg safely in place. 
And I think we're probably ready. Are we ready? Are we ready at the back? Sir Charlie Stinky Socks, The Dinosaurs Return. By me, Christina Stevenson. Once upon a moonlit night in a museum of marvelous things, high on a shelf where a cat was sleeping, something began to stir. You see, amongst the treasures and trinkets on the shelf, there was a most unusual egg. And the cat's warm fur and gentle purr were waking whatever was inside it. Tippity-tap, tippity-tap, the shell began to crack. <gasps> And out came the strangest little something the cat had ever seen. Behold a little something, the strangest sight to see. Wherever did it come from? To whom does it belong? Tell me what this curious thing can be. Oh my! Everyone say, oh my! Oh, How fortunate then that Sir, Char Sir Charlie Stinky Socks was studying maps in the museum that night when he heard his cat envelope calling. Map in hand, he bounded over to help his faithful friend. Excellent, brilliant, well done. Pop that on the floor for me. Do you want to come and say hello to the dinosaur? Come and say hello. Hello. No, behave yourself. Gosh, it's like emu, if anybody remembers emu. There, okay, no, no, very good, behave. Okay, Charlie, come back. We haven't finished with you. Jinkies, said Sir Charlie. Can you say jinkies? Brilliant, said Sir Charlie when he saw the little something. Whatever could it be? We say, whatever could it be? Whatever could it be? Well, oh gosh, he's brilliant, isn't he? Yeah. Sir Charlie, do you want to pick up that label which has fallen off? In museums, you have labels. Shall we have a look and see what this is? It might be a clue as to what this little creature is. <gasps> Unknown egg found at the foot of Thunder Mountain in the middle of the big blue sea. I don't know what this little something is. I don't know what this little something is, said Sir Charlie, but we need to take it home. We need to take it home. We do indeed. Stay there. You are brilliant, sir. You just copy what I do, OK? Come with me. Sir Charlie Stinky Socks and his faithful friends Looking for high adventure On your horse Clip-clopping along Brilliant! Down your knee Singing a song Looking for high adventure Get ready Never knowing what they'll see Around the corner What could it be? Who might they discover along the way? Rain? Rain or shine or moon or sun They don't care as long as it's fun Cos life is a big adventure For everyone Isn't it? Well done, Sir Charlie! You are brilliant. Do you want to go sit down? Thank you. So big round of applause for Sir Charlie. Absolutely fantastic. Oh my gosh, he stole the show. How can I continue after that? 
I just don't know. Well, Thunder Mountain was on the map. So Sir Charlie charted a course. He polished his sword and he pocketed some string which he'd kept from his last adventure. And with a rallying cry of, to Thunder Mountain, he mounted his good grey mare. Clop, clip, clop, clippity, clippity, clop, down to the harbour to borrow a boat from a pirate Sir Charlie knew. I promise to bring back your boat, called Sir Charlie, as he headed for the horizon. Sir Charlie and his friends sailed through the night by the light of a silvery moon. And by morning, they'd reached the spot on the map where the mountain was meant to be. <gasps> but where was Thunder Mountain? All they could see was, what could they see? Sea! Sir Charlie looked at the map again. That's odd, he said to the others. Just then, the boat gave a mighty lurch as it tipped and started to spin. Hold on tight, said the knowing knight. I think we're in a, what are we in? A whirlpool. <gasps> the swirling, whirling, watery tunnel sucked the adventurers down. It tipped them out of the little boat. It tossed them this way and that. Then it spat them out one by one at the foot of Thunder Mountain. They found it, <gasps> but the boat had been smashed to smithereens. All that was left was a barrel. Oh no! Everyone say, oh no! Said Sir Charlie, I promised the pirate I'd bring back his boat. Now what am I going to do? But before he had time to think of a plan, he heard a terrible rumbling. Three, four, rumble, rumble, boom, bash, rumble, rumble, boom, bash, rumble, rumble, boom, bash, rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Holy smoke, said Sir Charlie Stinky Socks, scooping up the barrel. Thunder Mountains, eh? What is it? What is it? a volcano and I think it's going to blow. Let's find this creature's family. <gasps> Quickly. Well, they searched the island for signs of life, but they didn't have any luck. So, they climbed to the top of the mountain to see what they could see. But the ground was shaking. The cat was quaking. And poor old envelope slipped. Oh no, everyone say, oh no. Oh, no. One more time, oh no. no, no. Sir Charlie Stinky Socks to the rescue! Into the crater dived the knight, followed by the good grey mare. Oh. Whee! They whizzed down a vent at mighty speed. 
marvelling as they went past walls of multicoloured minerals and precious stones galore. Luckily, they landed softly at the bottom in a chamber full of ash. And would say, hooray! Hooray! Nobody hurt themselves. Hooray and hurrah, said Sir Charlie. There isn't any lava. Thunder Mountain will never erupt. Everyone say hooray! Hooray! But envelope wasn't there. Oh my! Everyone say oh my! Can you see what's happened? Sir Charlie and the horse have gone down this vent. Can anyone see where envelope and the little something are? They've gone the wrong way. <gasps> oh no! He's lost, gasps at the worried knight. We have to go and find him. They hurried out of the dusty chamber, but didn't get very far. Yikes, said Sir Charlie to his terrified horse <laughs> as they teetered on the brink. And I think we've shrunk, he said when he realized that everything else was enormous. Just then, it's a dragonfly. A very big dragonfly comes into the story later. Just then, Sir Charlie spotted envelope Meow. way off in the distance with the little something who'd grown much bigger trotting along behind. We need to go after them, said Sir Charlie. <gasps> but there's no way down. Unless. Without thinking twice, that brilliant knight whipped off his stripy stockings. He tied them together, made a loop, and swung the lasso in the air. So clever Sir Charlie Stinky Socks, who's always very resourceful, is going to try and catch hold of that giant dragonfly and hitch a lift off that giant toadstool. So here's your cue, everybody. Let's help Sir Charlie. Let's help Sir Charlie to catch that dragonfly. So tie your socks together, make a lasso, and try and catch that enormous dragonfly that you can imagine flying overhead. Here we go, Sir Charlie, whipped off his stripy stockings. He tied them together, made a loop, and he swung the lasso in the air. Come on, big swing. There goes the dragonfly, quickly, before he goes. Catch him, can you do it? Yes! You have done it. So, Sir Charlie. The good grey mare didn't dare to look as they flew across the land. But this had to be the most beautiful place Sir Charlie had ever seen. A perfect, peaceful paradise filled with fabulous things. Isn't it lovely? And there was envelope just below. Tally-ho, cried the knight. Everyone say tally-ho. Tally-ho, cried the knight. Time to jump, said Sir Charlie, spotting a crystal pool. On my count, he said to the horse. One, two, uh, no, you can help me. Let's count down. We've got to make sure that Sir Charlie and the horse let go of the dragonfly at just the right point, And they're going to try and land safely in this crystal pool with a splash. So count with me. One, two, three. OK, wait for it. On my count, he said to the horse. One, two, three. Has he done it? Well done. Perfect landing, said Sir Charlie. Except 
The gulping grey mare couldn't swim. Phew! Huff the night as he heaved his horse onto a nearby island. And envelope can't be very far away. Why don't I use the smell from my stockings to let him know we're here? He is brilliant, Sir Charlie, isn't he? He's going to waft his socks in the air. And he's going to let that pungent pong, that smell, go all across the land. And wherever envelope the cat is, he's going to smell it, hopefully... If this works, he's going to follow that smell and the friends are going to be reunited. So shall we help Sir Charlie again? Shall we waft our socks in the air and send out a smell all the way around the Ed Edinburgh Festival book site? Here we go, whip off those socks and let's swing them in the air. Sir Charlie wafted his socks in the air and waited to see what would happen. But before he could tell, if his plan had worked, the pool began to bubble. Uh-oh, we're in trouble, said Sir Charlie, as the island lifted its head. They heard it roar. Then they saw shrieked Sir Charlie, and they're heading straight for us. Two, three, four. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. So that's why it's called Thunder Mountain, he shouted. But the good grey mare didn't hear him. The horse had fainted with fright at the sight of the dinosaur's teeth and claws. Oh my! Closer and closer came the thundering beasts. Sir Charlie couldn't bear it. He held his breath. He covered his eyes. He prepared for his terrible fate. But wait a second. Nothing happened. So Sir Charlie took a peek. Well, I never gasped Sir Charlie when he saw what was happening behind him. The dinosaurs hadn't been charging at him. They'd spotted something much sweeter. They'd run straight past the knight and his horse to be with their missing baby. Everyone go, oh, oh. That clever cat envelope had followed the smell from Sir Charlie's stinky socks. And without even realizing what he was doing, He'd brought the little dinosaur home. Everyone say, oh, wave at envelope, oh. Home, sweet home, back where he belongs. He was lost, then found all alone in a town. Oh, so far away. Then a knight and a cat and a pair of socks brought him home to stay. Oh, a big cheer for Envelope, I think. Yeah, he did so well. Hooray. Yes, he is quite heavy.
Sir Charlie hugged his faithful cat and he patted his good grey mare. This really was the most perfect place the knight had ever seen. It's pretty lovely, isn't it? Isn't it? Pretty lovely place, isn't it? Yes. <gasps> but we don't want any more eggs getting lost or people coming down here to spoil things, he said. We have to seal up the crater, but then how will we get home? Hmm. So clever Sir Charlie knows that if people come down to this wonderful paradise, they might spoil it. They might drop litter. Everyone say, oh my. They might cut down trees. Everyone say, oh my. So Sir Charlie knows he's got to stop people coming down here. He's got to seal up the volcano. But if he does that, how will Sir Charlie and his cat and his horse get home again? If they can't get home, there'll be no more Sir Charlie Stinky Socks books. Everyone go, oh my. Time for a truly ingenious night to come up with a brilliant plan. Sit there, envelope. He did. Rumble, rumble, he's very clever. Rumble, 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 rumble. Back to the bottom of the volcano they went, borrowing a boat on the way. Remember, he needs to return the boat. So Sir Charlie's on top of the mummy dinosaur, and he's cut down a giant seed pod, which looks a bit like a boat. There is envelope, and there is a horse, and they're heading back to the volcano. One more time, we're going to rumble, rumble, boom bash, and get Sir Charlie back to the bottom of the volcano. Three, four. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Rumble, rumble, boom, bash. Brilliant. Quick as a flash in the chamber of ash, Sir Charlie got to work. He tied his socks to the pirate's new boat and his string to a torch, which he'd lit. Can you see that? Little flaming torch. Now all I need, whoops, he said with a smile, is a lot of hot air. Huffity, puffity, puff. Grateful dinosaurs to the rescue. So people, I want you to be dinosaurs. And I want you to fill Sir Charlie's socks with hot air and see if you can get them to inflate. So I think three big puffs should do it. So try and fill those socks up. Here we go. Children, you were good. Some grown-ups, you were good. I think there are a few adults not using all their puff. So, can we try one more time? We need to fill those socks with air. Here we go. <gasps> one, two, three. Wow! Sir Charlie and his friends were heading home. Up, up, and away. But hold your horses. That's not the end. Take another look. Can you see the trail of gunpowder, the barrel, and the string? Can you guess what's going to happen? When the flying boat was clear of the crater, Sir Charlie pulled the string. Kapow! Thunder Mountain burst into life sending multicolored minerals and precious stones galore, soaring high up into the sky before sealing the crater with boulders. Hurrah! Come on, everybody, cheer for Charlie. Hurrah! One more time, even louder. Hurrah! Well, that should do it, cheered Sir Charlie as they headed for the horizon. But gosh, said the knight, looking back at the fireworks. How do we follow that? Who's in the mood, he said with a smile, for a really big 
adventure. The end. Did you enjoy that? Did you see that neat little way I tied the last book, if it is in fact the last book, the last book to the first book, Really Big Adventure? So you can read them all. All these books, you can start with this one if you want to. You can read them in any order, but you can start with the Really Big Adventure. And then if you read the next one, you'll see that they all link to one another. And it finishes up with this one, which takes you right back to the Really Big Adventure. Oh my goodness gracious me, I'm absolutely exhausted. But I need to have author having a drink of water. Now, we're going to have time, I think, for questions and answers at the end. Um, and we'll have a round of applause for Sir Charlie at the end. So don't wait. We haven't forgotten you. Um, and the young man who remembered the egg. But first of all, I think it's time for all of you to join me in a song. Anyone who's been before will know what this song is called. Can anybody tell me what this song is called? What's it called? Green bean, Green bean soup. For those of you who've never been to this show before, you will know that the first three books that I wrote all have something in common. In the first book, The Really Big Adventure, there's a wily witch with a watch, and she's cooking a big pot of something for the princess's birthday party. Do you know what's in that pot? Green bean soup. It is green bean soup. And green bean soup is very, very delicious. Who likes green bean soup? Who doesn't like green bean soup? Oh, you should like green bean soup. Green bean soup is delicious, and green beans are very, very good for you. So you should eat lots and lots of green beans. Uh, the only problem is, what happens if you eat too many beans? <laughs> Oh, excuse me. So in the second story, The Really Frightful Night, Sir Charlie Stinky Socks is on a ghost hunt. He's looking for um, the princess's lost teddy bear in a haunted tower. And he comes across a gaggle of ghastly ghouls. And they've found the leftover green bean soup. And they are finishing it off. They are dribbling. They are drooling. They are guzzling. They are gorging. They are slurping. They are burping. And they are... <laughs> they are. I'm very sorry. I'm making a terrible smell. So Sir Charlie Stinky Socks opens up the window with his sword. He only ever used his sword for good things. He opens up the window and he takes the pot of green bean soup and he throws it out, which is good because nobody can eat any more green beans and the smell's gone out of the window. <gasps> but what happens if those beans happen to be magic beans? What happens if you throw magic beans out of a tall, tall tower? What happens when they land on the ground? Who can tell me? What does it grow into? A beanstalk, a beanstalk. So in book number three, there's a beanstalk and a wizard comes down and tells everybody, apart from Sir Charlie, into stone and Charlie has to tell them back again. And you can get all these books in the bookshop and I'll sign them for you if you want to. So what we've got is we have got a song all about the perils of green bean soup. I think we've got the words somewhere here. We might have the words for you. And what you'll be doing is you'll be, you'll be, singing, you'll be singing the chorus. I'll be singing the verse. Do we have the words? We do have the words. If not, I've got a board. I've got a magical board, a pantomime style board. We've got the words. Bear with, as they say. Here we are, green bean soup. So, can you see the words, everybody? You can say them with me because green bean soup is so wonderful. Green bean soup is swell. Green bean soup is amazing. But on the amazing, can we have jazz hands? Amazing. And then there's a little bit of pause. And then the last line, cover your nose and say, and never mind the smell. Excellent. So let's have a little practice with the music. You'll get the hang of it, and then you'll be singing it all day, I promise you. One, two, three. Because green bean soup is so wonderful. Green bean soup is swell. Green bean soup is amazing. Cover your nose, wait for it. And never mind the smell. We can do better than that for the real thing, but that's a good practice. Here we go. Should we do this for real? Green bean soup. Good dancing there. Take a bean that is green, never pink. Purple or blue, never blue. If the bean that you choose isn't green, then the soup could be a stew. That will not do. Take a pinch of bogey from your nose, a slice of cheese from under your toes. Stir it up, stir it well. Add some dribble, drool, guzzle and ghoul. Slurp it all when slightly cool. Cover your nose, last line. 
Never mind the smell. Right to the top. Because green bean soup is so wonderful. Green bean soup is swell. Bit of swaying. Green bean soup is amazing. Cover your nose. Never mind the smell. Brilliant, you are so good. Excuse me. So sorry. Bit more swaying, please. Take a bean that is green, never red, orange or grey, never grey. If the bean that you choose isn't green, then the soup could be a souffle and great dismay. Take a pinch of bogey from your nose, a slice of cheese from under your toes. Stir it up, stir it well. Add some dribble, drool, a guzzle and ghoul. Slurp it all when slightly cool. Cover your nose. Last line. And never mind the smell. Because green bean soup is so wonderful. Bit louder. Green bean soup is swell. Brilliant. Green bean soup is amazing. Cover your nose. But never mind the smell. One more time. Green bean soup is so wonderful. Green bean soup is swell. Green bean soup is amazing. Big finish. Cover your nose. But never mind the smell. I beg your pardon. Give yourselves a great big clap. Oh my goodness. Right, I think we've got five minutes. If anybody would like to ask any questions, do you have burning questions that you'd like to ask me? Have you been dying to ask me anything at all? I think we've got a microphone here, so put your hand up if you've got a question that you'd like to ask me.